<laughs> the Muslims don't know what their Quran teaches them. Let me clarify what I say. What I say, what I say is that the Quran does not say that the Torah it does not use the name Torah and the Injil and say that they are corrupt. It does not say that. So who's right, this guy or this guy? They're both right. They're both right. Chapter two, verse seventeen. Wait, 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 brother. I'm looking for my own verse. You'll just have to get yours. Chapter 2 verse 79. I'm looking for my own verse. You're going to have to get yours. I'm going to prove it to you that Muslims, early Muslims believe the Injil, the Bible has been corrupted. I'm not arguing that. That's not my argument, Abbas. Abbas, that's not my argument. Right. Guys, listen. Listen. Listen, this is the, this is the verse that I want to, to bring up. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Lamin has encamped himself here. If you want to hear me, I'm just going to have to speak up. Okay. Chapter and verse. So the verse in the Quran states this. Chapter and verse. Surah 6, Ayah 68. Sorry, Surah 5, Ayah 68. Surah 5, Ayah 68. The Quran states this. Say, this is to Muhammad, O people of the scripture. Who's that? Jews and Christians. You have nothing as regards to guidance until you act in accordance with the Torah and the Injil. And what has not... Listen, listen, because you're about to be embarrassed by your own book. Listen, to the Torah and the Injil and what has now been sent down to you from your Lord, the Quran. Verily that which has been sent down to you from your Lord increases most of them in their obstinate rebellion and disbelief. So the Quran instructs Jews and Christians to follow the Torah, the Injil and the Quran. If they're following the Torah and the Injil, that means the Quran believes that the Torah and the Injil are there to follow. Otherwise, the command of the Quran is nonsense. You finish. He read chapter 5, verse 68. What comes first, 68 or 48? Chapter 5, verse 48 comes before that. Let's read what it says. And we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, meaning Quran, confirming that which prescribed it, uh, uh, preceded it, of the scripture, and a criterion yeah, over it. That's what I said. So Quran is a criterion over what the scripture. Books? What is criterion? Criterion is a yardstick. If anything goes against, you reject it. Anything goes with, you accept it. That's the first point. Second point, chapter 2, verse 79, it says, Woe to those who write with their own hands and say it is from Allah. Woe to those who do that for a little earning. Now, how the companions understood that verse? Let's go to the Hadith. How the companion understood that verse? They know better than you and me. So I'm going to go to the Hadith. If you want a quote, I can, I can give you a quote. Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. Hadith number 2685. It says, narrated Abdullah bin, uh, Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Utbah. Ibn Abbas said, companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa O Muslims, how do you ask the people of the scripture? Though your book, that is the Quran, which was revealed to his prophet is the most recent information from Allah. And you recited the book that has that has not been distorted. Allah has revealed to you that the people of the scriptures have changed with their own hands. That was revealed to them. And they have said, as regards to their uh, changed scriptures, this is from Allah, in order to get some worldly gain. This is exactly the interpretation of chapter 2, verse 79. So who's saying is? Uh, Ibn Abbas. So this is your answer. May Muslims reply? understood that the Bible and the uh, Injil and the Torah is uh, corrupted. May I reply? And Quran also says chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. They have changed it and forgotten it. Chapter uh, 5, verse 13 and 14 says they have changed it and they have forgotten it. Talking about Jews and Christians. Welcome to so that. This is the, uh, this is the answer that. you were looking so for. So allow me to reply. So I'm just going to deal with a couple of points. Firstly, Abbas appeals to hadiths that were written 200 years later. 200 years later, 
by which time, by which time, notice he's interrupting. Notice he interrupted. Did I interrupt Abbas? No. Did you just see him interrupt me? Yes. Do you know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because his dean has failed him. Mohammed has failed his heart and he's interrupting again. And he's interrupting again. Why is it whenever I have to speak, I have to shout, but when the Muslims speak, I am quiet. Did I interrupt him? No, no, answer the, be honest. Speak against your brother if it's the truth. Did I interrupt him? Thank you. Was it right for him to interrupt me? Abbas, your Muslim brothers are correcting you. Are you finished, Abbas? Are you done? No, I'm not. Be quiet. I will I will review you. Right. So Abbas. It's just a drama. One second, Abbas. Calm down. Because Muslims complain. There we go again, he just can't shut up, can he? Do you want to listen to my reply or to Abbas? Abbas, shut up! Shut up, Abbas! Are you done? You know what it is? It's that supremacy complex. He has to have the last word because he believes as a Muslim that he's superior. And as a Muslim who's superior, he has to have the last word. Islamic superiority complex right there in Abbas. Now, Abbas, I'm thank you. Quiet. There we go. Yeah. I can't oh, speak, can I, without no, interruption? Insulting. Are you done? You Are you insult. done? You Are you done? You Are you done? That's all they have. Are we done? Are we done? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, Abbas quoted a hadith that was given hundreds of years later. I'm not interested in his spurious hadiths. I don't care about this collection of hadiths that every time Christians quote hadiths to the Muslims, as Abbas pointed out, that are sahih but embarrassing to Muslims, the Muslims chuck them under the bus. When we point out that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old child, the Muslims chuck them under the bus. When we point out that Muhammad permitted his followers to rape female prisoners, they chuck them under the bus, just like that. When we point out that the Hadiths demonstrate that the Quran has been changed, they chuck them under the bus. So I don't care, I don't care about their Hadiths. Notice, where is Shamsi? Where's Shamsi? Shamsi! 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 Who's running from Shamsi? No one's running from Shamsi. The more you interrupt me, the longer I have to talk. If you can just control yourselves, I will get through this a lot quicker. So, now I have explained my reasons for ignoring Abbas's hadiths, let's go back to the Quran that he quoted. Now notice, he didn't address the verse that I quoted to him. Let me quote it again. Say, O Muhammad, O people of the scripture, you have nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. Say it again because Abbas wasn't listening. Nothing. 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 You have nothing, nothing. 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 as guidance until you act according to the Torah and the Injil and the Quran. So what's that? Torah, Injil and Quran. That's the Quranic worldview. You believe and follow all the books. But then he quoted a verse in the Quran that said that the Quran is a standard over the other books. What does that mean? Are you listening, Abbas? I'm addressing your verse. Muslims believe in a concept of abrogation. So what Allah reveals at one time, he can change at another time. And it is in this way that the Quran is a standard over the Hadiths and the Torah. Let me give one example. The Torah of Moses says that you can't eat camel meat. 
but we all know Muhammad loved camel meat. Not me, the So the Quran is a standard over the Torah because the Quran will permit Muhammad to do something that the Injil forbids. The Injil forbids you to look at lust in your eyes to a woman. But we know that Muhammad looked at lust in his eyes to one of his own relatives' wives. So in this way, the Quran is a standard over the Injil and the Torah. It doesn't mean that the Quran is saying that the Torah and the Injil has been changed. So show me who's enjoying what I'm saying. You made a point. Give me a chance now. Abbas, did I interrupt you? You're going on and on. Like you did, but I allowed it. Did anybody buy it? Allowed it. I allowed it. If you want a formal debate, we can do a formal debate. So, I have, re I have addressed your point. Now I would like you to address the points that I've raised. Okay, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go your level and insult you, inshallah, because I'm a Muslim. Yes, he's right. Muslims are superior. Why? Because Muslims. I tell you why. I tell you why. What I say. He said I'm not going to insult you, but then he just said I'm inferior. Within 20 seconds, he contradicts himself. Who's talking over here? Now you're talking here. You set the rules. That was the standard you set, Abbas. You know if you interrupt me, I will interrupt you. You know how it goes. He does that all the time. Now you see, he will not control it. He'll talk again. When I say superior, meaning the truth is always superior over falsehood. And even as a Christian, even as a Christian, you believe that. Truth is always superior over falsehood. Say the truth has arrived and falsehood perish. But by its nature, true falsehood is bound to perish. And you are false and Muslims are on the truth. So yes, the truth is always superior. Now, I will answer the question. I will answer your question. Let's say, let's hear. Can you Amen. Hello, it's my turn. Hello, you Christians, it's my turn. Oh, notice, Abbas wants you all to show up now because he's talking, but he couldn't show when I was talking. Oh, didn't you? Didn't you? Practice See, what you preach. Go on. Hold your Holy Spirit, whatever you call it. I call it a demon. So hold your demons there. And the, and the demon will always become agitated when the truth comes. Now, let's... Like he, oh, hey, hello. Calm down. Like oh, Paji, chup ho oh, chup ho Sorry, guys. I'm, Pakist I'm Pakistani. Is that any way to speak to I'm your elder? I'm proud of being Pakistani. Is that any way to speak to your elder? Shush now. You need to be quiet. I'm talking right now. Okay. Now, Everyone he, he, whenever you see Bob use hadith all the time in the park, but he, when I use hadith, he say no hadith, because he know hadith expose his view. I'm not going to use hadith, let's say. I'm going to use his verse, chapter uh, 5, verse 68, where he says, oh, you people of the scripture, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. Go to the one Lord your Lord has revealed. Now, what that means, Lord has revealed. When you want to understand any scripture, you don't just pick and choose. You understand the scripture as a whole, intertextually. Now, when we look Quran intertextually, chapter 2, verse 79, chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, chapter 5, verse 48, is clearly telling us the scriptures have been distorted. And Bob, I want you to pay attention. Listen to me, Bob. Bob, pay attention. I want him to listen now. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Hello. Which listen one? to me right now, Bob. Oh, 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. Did he, did he do that? And did you condemn him when he did that? No, you didn't condemn him when he did that. Okay. But it's funny when it's funny Muslims argue that when it's done to them, but they never correct one another. So what I did was wrong. So you are following what I did wrong. You mean that you have no common sense? You have no morality? Maybe you should just you do you better, no, Abbas, no, rather than lowering the no, standard. You have no principles. When, when I was talking with wrong, you, did we you have a, a dialogue? Level? Okay, you Do you know why we had a dialogue? Because you, you didn't interrupt you me. When we were talking, did we have a dialogue? No, you are a hypocrite. Let we did, didn't we? Point. Because you Hello, didn't interrupt me. Let me make my point. Go on, Abbas. Okay. Church now. So when he says, when you want to understand any scripture, you understand as holistically, yeah? What the scriptures are saying. Now here, after understanding all the scripture, chapter 5, verse 48 already told us, Quran is a Muhammad, chapter 270, I said, they have changed. Chai 548. Quran is a watcher. Quran is a watcher over the scripture. 279 say they write with their own hand and they say it is from God. Then 513 and 14 says they, they have forgotten and they have distorted. Chapter 5 verse 13 said they have distorted it. And 514 say they have forgotten. 
Now after understanding all that, when we come back to chapter 5 verse 68, it says, tell them to go back to what God has revealed. So we need to understand what God has revealed, not what you write with your own hands, not what you forgot and yet you're writing, meaning what God has revealed. And we Muslims believe in the Bible there are still words of God are still in there. Only if you use Quran as a yardstick, Quran as a Muhammad, Quran will judge what is right and what is wrong. So that is what 568 is saying. It's not saying go back to your book and believe everything he says. No. Remember the, the key word here is what Allah has revealed. So what Allah has revealed you need to find out, not what you write with your own hand. So I, without using any hadith, I refute your very point you were trying to make. Now that's what I'm going to say. Okay. And I'll say, may Allah guide you, may Allah guide me as well. Abbas, 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 Abbas is going to run away now. Abbas is going to run away now. I'm running away. Yes, Abbas is running away. Bye bye, Abbas. No, no, that's fine. But let me just let me just reply to what Abbas said. Because Abbas is lying to you. When you go to Surah 5, Ayah 48, we read this. And we believe and we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book, this Quran, in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. For what? Yeah? So if it's confirming, it's not corrupt. That, that, That's what this verse is saying. When it says that it is a standard over it, it means that the Quran is making permissible things that the Torah was said was impermissible, like the eating of camel meat, which is forbidden in the Torah, but Muhammad ate camel meat, like looking with lust in a, for a woman with your eyes, which, in, which Christ forbids, but Muhammad practiced. Now, one second, one second. I want to read this to you. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll, you, you, I'm sorry, but he raised multiple points. Yeah. So, this is what Surah 10, Ayah 94 says. So, if you, O Muhammad, are in doubt concerning that which we have revealed unto you, what was revealed unto Muhammad? The Quran. This is what it says. If you were in doubt that your name is written in the Torah and the Injil. So it's saying that his name is written in the Torah and the Injil. Can you find me his name written in the Torah and the Injil? No, you can't. Trust me, no Muslim can. Yep. Then ask those, then ask those, are you listening to this bit? Then ask those who are reading the book, the Torah and the Injil before you. So who is he going to ask? No, he's been told to, how can he ask people that are dead? No, think. No, I'm asking you to think. Think. He can't ask people that are dead, can he? I'm asking you to think. Because the Jews and the Christians were reading the Torah and the Injil before Muhammad was made a prophet. So who is he talking about when he says, ask those who were reading it before you? It can't be dead people. It's got to be people that are alive. Which means, which means that the Torah and the Injil, according to the Quran, are there in the 7th century in the Arabian Peninsula and in Jail, before you verily the truth has come to you from your Lord so be not of those who doubt yeah now you can reply <laughs> no, fine. Ah, look, look, look. Okay, Jesus, in the Quran, in Sosan, Quran, yeah? can you deal with this one about what this yeah deal with this one Bro, all I'm saying is that no I want you to deal with this one because you're people are verses so I can pull up my verses as well I want to deal you I'll Bro, deal with your verse but you deal with mine all of the verses that you judge just said we believe that they've changed did they change them up there's so much contradictions in them so you're That's contradicting like, the Quran then I'm not contradicting. yeah the Quran doesn't say no, that but in here, the, the Quran does say, not say what you're saying what the, 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 show me where the Quran says what you're saying Bro, hey look to whom he belongs, the dominion of the heavens and the earth. No, he has no son and no begotten. Right. If he says no son, the primary factor in the Bible is that God has a son. Yes or no? Yes. So if he clearly says, they, um, like, don't believe, look here. He yes, has yes, no son. yes. So how can that, if he says, he has I'll no reply son, to you. So Let me explain to you. Because the Quran accuses Jews and Christians of reading the book but lying about its teaching. So the accusation is that Christians know that the Injil does not teach that God has a son. No, no, I'm talking about what the Quran says, not what your scholars have brainwashed you with. Listen, did I, listen, you asked me to deal with your verse, you ignored my verse, and then when I'm dealing with your verse, you're just interrupting. Listen, 
The Quran does not say that the text of the Injil or the Torah has been changed. It accuses Jews and Christians of lying about what the Torah and the Injil teach. So when it says that the Quran is a correction to those who say that Allah has a son, it's accusing the Christians of lying about the Injil because the, according to the Quran, the Injil is the word of Allah. And does the Quran say that anyone can change the word of Allah? Doesn't say the Bible. No, no, no go listen. Go I'm going to show you. Yeah. The word of Allah, it says the say, of the Quran. No, it says the Quran no, cannot be changed. I'm going, I'm, do you? Yes. And does every Muslim? No, they don't, do they? They don't, do they? So what? So, it so, it's a, so it's a non argument, isn't it? To come up to a Christian critic of Islam and say, well, you don't know the Arabic. Most Indonesian Muslims don't know the Arabic. Most Malaysian Muslims don't know the Arabic. Most Pakistani Muslims don't know the Arabic. It's the most stupid argument in the world. It's the most stupid argument in the world, seriously. 75 to 80 percent, they don't speak Arabic. Azerbaijanis, they don't speak Arabic. Turkish, they don't speak Arabic. There are people that know yes. Arabic. What, Arabic. What do you mean Arabic? So make it up no, 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 they don't speak Arabic, do they? Like the Iranian, they read, they pray, they do everything. But when you say, do you understand what he said? No. Bro, that's translation, you know. We don't understand what he said. We don't speak Arabic at the end. Right? Do, 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 do. I'm finding it, bro. Patience, mate. Because the thing is, if you make a thing up about me not fight, being able to find the verse and then I find it, you're going to look really silly, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find it. Patience, bro. Patience. I can only destroy so much of the Quran at a time. Asking people dead people does not mean going back to original written sources. If you're asking people dead people, you go back to what's been written in the past. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm not, you know. Yeah, that's fine. You're not going to be waiting for much longer. Right. So this is one of the places where it says this. Yeah. And recite what has been revealed to you of the book, which is the Quran, O Muhammad, of your Lord, recite and under... Right, this is the brackets. None can change his words, yeah? And none will find a refuge other than him. When it says none can change his words, is that a fact? Yes, it is fact. Was the Torah in the Injil the words of Allah? Yes. There Before. you go. But look, can I, can I speak? No, leave it, leave it, leave it. Yeah, we'll come back to it. We can come, come back to it. No, Pull it up. Now. I'll give you the reference. It's Surah, it Surah 1827. Pull it up. Surah 1827. There is another one that just says, none can change the words of Allah. Just can't find it. What's that? Surah 1827. Yeah, Surah 18, verse 27. Oh, verse 27, sorry, I'll oh, answer oh, no, right, right, right. Here it says, yeah. what has been revealed to the book. When it says the book, it means the Quran. It does not mean the Bible or the Injil, yes or no. When it says... It says the book. Yes, it's talking about the Quran, yes, yes, yes. And then, none can change his words. Correct. His words is so was the, the Torah and the Injil originally Allah's words? No, but he's speaking about, about the Quran now. Too. So what he's saying is people could change Allah's words in the past, but not now. No, he's not so saying... Oh, so it's not saying that? No, I'm just saying it has been changed. The so so people changed. could change the words of Allah in the past? Yes. So God. Allah's words can be changed? Yes. I mean, so how do you know they can't be changed now? Because he, first he says he is the guardian of this book. He says yep. in the Quran. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact verse. But he says he's the guardian of this book. And yes. He over here, Wasn't he also the, the God of the Torah and the Injil? Sorry? Wasn't he also the God of the Torah and the Injil? So are the Torah and the Injil less valuable to Allah than the Quran? No, I'm just, no he's speaking about the Quran. Yeah, but I'm the thing, the Quran, and I'm asking I'm you to think. Go on. Go on. This is why I reject the Quran. What's that? Because the Quran is saying that the Torah was the word of Allah and the Injil was the word of Allah and that all the books are equal. And then it's saying that none can change the words of Allah. It says no, there's another verse where it just says none can change the words of Allah. Where that? 
I'm trying to find it right now. I'm pretty sure right? you'll find it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I will find it. It might take me some time. I might have to come back and get you. One thing, right? But the point is, no, think logically. If it says none can change the words of Allah and someone changes the Injil, then that means people can change the words of Allah. Before it says the book. The book is the Quran. So what you're, you're saying is Allah cares more about the Quran than he does about the no, Injil. The and that's the, the problem, bro. Revelation. That's the problem. The Quran was the final revelation. So that's the problem. So the other ones... So Allah didn't final. care about the Injil. I'm not saying that. It's so why did he allow it to be changed? So why did he allow it to be changed? It doesn't say over there, but I'm just saying over there. So why does he allow it to be changed? The Quran. So why does he allow it to be changed? Bro, even Christians say it's changed. Why does he allow it to be changed? Christians say it's changed. Yes, this is not a problem for us. It's not a problem for us. But you're changing the topic and you're avoiding my question. My question again. Why did he allow the Injil to be changed? I'm not God to the side, mate. So if you if you have something and you look after it and you have another thing and you allow it to be abused, what does that say about what your value to those things? It's saying one thing has value and another doesn't. They're not of equal value. And what has been revealed to die the Yes, and then it goes on to say that none can change the words of Allah. In the same verse, bro, what can you understand? It says the Quran. I agree it's talking about the Quran, but the principle can also be applied to the Injil and the Torah. Why not? Because the Quran is the final revelation. Tell me something about the Quran, right? In, a, in terms of its essence, in terms of its nature, that is not true about the Injil. Is the Quran the word of Allah? Yes. Is the Injil the word of Allah? Yes. Is no, the Torah well, the word of Allah? Now, in the past. So my the point is, if it was the words of Allah yes. and Allah allowed it to be changed, we can only draw one of two conclusions. Either it was never the words of Allah and thus it could be changed, no. or Allah didn't care about it enough in which it can be changed. No, if he didn't care about it... Six one one five. Let's have a look. What's that? I think we've I think we've been to this one actually. Just says none can change the words of Allah. If you just put none can change the words of Allah in the Quran and see what comes up. Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you, bro? Why it's not a problem? Right? Bro, it has to be a problem. It's not a problem, it really it's, isn't. If something's changed no. in the word of God, it's, it's really not, not a problem. Words. It's really not a problem. Oh. I'm going okay, to explain right, that. This is God's words and I add stuff over here. Right, here it's we go. Surah, Surah 6, 115. Say again, wait, Surah what? Surah 6, 115. Well, and that? the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his words and he is the all-hearer and the all-knower. The only conclusion we can draw is either the Injil and the Torah was not the word of Allah, or Allah didn't care about it. The word, the verse before it, it yes. says the Quran. So, so what are you saying? Shall mate? I seek judge other than Allah while well, it is okay. He who has that sent down oh, unto you the book, the book. explained uh, in detail those unto whom we gave the scripture? Who What's are those the people? What's the book? Who are those What's people? The, the Quran. The, the Quran. And, the and then it goes, it nobody can change explained in detail those unto whom we gave the scripture, the Torah and the Injil. Oh, okay. Know that it is revealed from your Lord in truth, so be oh, not you of those who doubt. Whoa, wait, so it says in the it. verse, the Quran, the Torah and the Injil and then it says and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and injustice none can change his word does it say over there the Quran or not it says the book yes does he also does say the book? Torah and the Angel? where the hell is this is yeah Go on for one second. shall I seek look read it with me bro say O Muhammad Shall I seek judge other than Allah while it is he who has sent down unto you the book, the Quran, explained in detail those unto whom we gave the scripture, the Torah and the Injil. Know that it is revealed from your Lord in truth, so be not of those who doubt. Perfect. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his words. Right. So the Quran is identified as the word of Allah, the Torah is identified as the word of Allah, the Injil is identified as the word of Allah, and it says that none can change his words. You don't believe your Quran. Right, Let, let's move on. Let's move on. Tell me now, just tell me, tell me. How Jesus can be God if he does not know the end of time? Tell me, it's a simple question. Okay. okay. No, 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 let's, we're going to change the topic. We're going to change the topic.